In this question, we are given the equation of a graph and question one says draw the graph. Okay, so can you guys remember what type of graph this is? This is more last year's kind of work. Well, that is a parabola. Now, what do we need to draw a parabola? If you've forgotten, what I always advise people to do is just to draw a random parabola and then inspect a few things. Well, there's definitely x-intercepts, there's a y-intercept, and of course, a turning point because people sometimes get stuck and they're like oh but what about the asymptote meanwhile if you just draw a quick sketch you'd realize there's no asymptote we don't have a dotted line going through the bottom there and so those are the only three things that we would need x-intercept y-intercept turning point of course some parabolas don't have a x-intercept for example you might get that but then as you're busy calculating you would probably get an error on your calculator and then you would probably understand what's happening but it's always a good idea to just draw a rough sketch graph just to see what areas you need to focus on. So let's get started. So you could do it in any order, but I'm just going to start with the x-intercepts. So to find the x-intercepts, you make y equal to 0. Okay, I just moved some of those questions away. I'll bring them back when we need them later. So we're going to make y 0. Now there are two main ways to solve this. The most popular approach would be to multiply the bracket out, collect all the like terms, and then use the quadratic formula. Or, if possible, you could simply factorize. However, there is another way, and I'm just going to do that. It's a bit faster. We take the 4 over to the left. To get rid of the square, we take a square root on both sides, remembering that whenever you take a square root, you always say plus minus. The square root of 4 is 2. Then on the right, we'll just be left with x minus 1, because the 2 disappears when you take a square root. And so we're going to end up with plus minus 2. It went wrong. Plus minus 2. I'm going to bring this minus 1 over. And that's going to be equal to x. So x will have, well, let's say x, let's say this is positive 2, then x would be 3. And let's say that was a negative 2, then it will be negative 2 plus 1, which is minus 1. And so those are the two x intercepts. So there we've got them on the graph. Next will be the y intercept. To find a y intercept, you make x 0, which is going to give you 1 minus 4, which is, oh no, but that's going to be, a, yeah, so it's going to be positive 1. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. And so there we have that point placed on the graph. And now lastly, to find the turning point, two ways once again, you could multiply all of this out. You would end up with some type of trinomial, and then you could use the x equals to minus b over 2a formula. That's if you have the formula written out in standard form or like a trinomial. However, there is a better way or a faster way, and that is to remember that this parabola is already written in turning point form. And so x minus 1 means that the graph has been shifted one place to the right and four places down. So remember, an original parabola would start at 0, 0. Now, if you had to move it one place to the right and four places down, well, then your turning point would end up at the coordinates of 1, negative 4. So this is the turning point form of a parabola, but if you don't like to use it that way, then you multiply everything out, collect all the like terms, you'll probably end up with some type of trinomial, and then you could just use the minus b over 2a to get the x value of the turning point. You then plug that x value back into the original equation to get the y value of the turning point. But if we can simply remember that this is the turning point form, then we get our turning point very easily. Now we can connect the dots, and it's never going to look super pretty, but teachers don't mind as long as you have the correct coordinates. Okay, so we've drawn the graph of f of x. Question two, determine the x values for which, now remember when they have that minus one over there, that is inverse. So determine the x values for which the inverse, and what does this stand for? It's the y values. So they're saying what must the x value be so that the y value is equal to one? So the y value of the inverse must be equal to 1. Well, if the y value of the inverse is equal to 1, then what does that mean for this graph? It means that its x value is 1. So if its x value is 1, then its y value is minus 4. So this is the original graph. And if we had to switch that around for the inverse, then that would be minus 4 and 1. So they say, yeah, determine the x values for which the inverse y is 1. Well, here the inverse y is 1, and so the x value is minus 4, and so that's the answer for that question. 
Number three says determine the domain and range of the inverse. Okay, well that's very easy. We just get the domain and range of the original and then we'll just switch things around. But first, what is domain? Well, domain is all your x values, okay? So let's have a look at that. This graph can have any x value. So its domain will be x as an element of all real numbers. The range, that's the y values. Oh, let me just specify that we're busy talking about the original graph here. The range is all the y values. So we should always say y as an element. Then this graph has a minimum y value of negative 4, but then it can go all the way up to positive infinity. So we'll say that's actually going to be a square bracket because it includes minus 4, and we'll go all the way up to infinity, which is always a round bracket. Now all that you do for the inverse is you can still say domain, and you can still say range, and then you literally just switch the letters around. So this domain will be y as an element of r, and this one will just say xe minus 4 to infinite. Notice for domain and range, I don't switch these around, I just switch the letters around. And the last question for this video says, determine the inverse y value when x is 0. Because remember, inside the bracket is always an x. So that question in everyday language is saying, what is the inverse y when x is 0? So if x is 0 for the inverse, then that means y is 0 for the original. So where is y 0 on the original? Well, that's here and here. So what are the x values? OK, so those points, let me just write them down. So that's original, minus 1, 0, and then 3 and 0. If we are to look at the inverse, which is the flipped around, then that'll be 0, minus 1, and 0, and 3. So it says here, the question, what is the inverse y value when the x values are 0? Well, here the x values are both 0, and so the y values are minus 1 and 3. So the answer will be y equals to minus 1 or y equals to 3. So I hope this video allowed you to see that inverses are just switched around. You just switch the x and y values of the original and you don't even have to draw the inverse to be able to analyze it. You can just analyze it using the original.